Hello, hello. And welcome back to Monday Musings with Lauren G. Koch, Keeper of the Old Ways. It's so great to have you back. And this chat is about self-acceptance. And <laughs> say hello to everybody. This is Ben. He's my helper. He also hogs all my love, but that's all right. Okay, we're talking to folks, so sit down. So with self-acceptance, it's so important to embrace your whole self. And within that, it's the profound act of embracing and loving every facet of who you are without judgment or condition. I know, I know it sounds really, really difficult because within this, we're acknowledging our strengths and our weaknesses, along with learning to celebrate our triumphs and not be brought down by our mistakes, right? It's also embracing our quirks and our idiosyncrasies, sometimes, you know, those can be our superpowers, right? Especially if you're neurodivergent, <laughs> which I know a lot about, or I'm trying to start to learn a lot about, so it's, that is me. And fully embracing all of that. As part of your unique essence, our unique essence, we all have very, very different ways that we show up in life and we can improve this every day. And that, it means extending the same compassion to yourself that you would readily offer to a dear friend, right? Right? And in essence, self-acceptance is the cornerstone of a healthy and balanced relationship with self. And without self-acceptance, it's going to be harder to find the happiness and fulfillment that we seek. And here's why. Self-acceptance paves the way to inner peace. And when you accept yourself as you are, you release the internal struggle for perfection and the need to hold on to unrealistic standards. <laughs> I have experienced this so many times in my life. Um, and I'm sure that you can connect to that. The, uh, perfectionism runs deep in myself, in my family, um, the way that I was raised, you know, onions had to be diced up in a certain precise manner. Um, and that has carried over to how I create art, how I create my work for my communities and stuff like that. And within finding a path to inner peace, you start finding tranquility within being your authentic self. And if we don't get comfortable with that and we don't accept who we are and stop fighting it, we're always going to be in a bit of a turmoil, turmoil right? But also, by being our authentic self and showing up with acknowledgement and acceptance of our strengths and weaknesses, we gain confidence. When you accept and acknowledge the unique talents that you have and areas where you need growth, this knowledge empowers you. And you're able to start making positive changes without fear and even condemning of self, right? It's so easy to reaffirm the negatives in our life. Um, and 
self-condemnation is something that we can easily jump on the bandwagon with because it's easier to believe negative things about ourselves than good things. That's our default is going back into the negative. Um, and our inner critic reaffirmed that for us. So if you're ready to start building your own confidence, let's start moving towards self-acceptance, okay? Also, if you've experienced burnout, you're in recovery or otherwise, you'll realize that buoyancy and resiliency is the biggest part of the healing process and when you're constantly putting more and more negativity on yourself and more like if I just push harder you know I'm going to make this I'm going to push and make this happen we're going to lose so much because basically we start with a bucket as a child we start with a bucket and you know, this works for both physical as well as emotional trauma that we experience. We start throwing in different life experiences, um, bicycle wreck, um, our grandparent died, um, all of these things, you know, maybe, maybe a best friend moved away and we haven't talked to them or, we ended up getting in a bad relationship. You get the idea. All of these things start building up in your bucket. There's not a drain at the bottom, but we have more buoyancy and resilience, right? As we're younger. But it gradually starts filling up. And when it gets to the top, it starts flowing over the top of the bucket. And that's that buoyancy that's that resilience we need to start working on creating more headspace at the top of our bucket or our mason jar if you're a canner <laughs> a, a preserver of fine summer squash or something like that um but self-acceptance in and of itself creates a shield basically in this way to provide protection from life's inevitable challenges that's the biggest thing a lot of times people think on their healing journey that they've got it all fixed they they won't have any more stress or anything like that but that is not the case in fact sometimes I like to talk about the uh, the onion, the healing onion. We peel back layers and we go deeper, right? And within that, you're going to come up against some gnarly stuff that you might have stuffed so far down that you have completely forgot about it. And that's okay. That's completely fine. And when you start finding this resilience when you're able to accept yourself and external criticism that comes your way and setbacks detours speed bumps whatever you all call them they will start having less power to shake you from your core of self-worth i like to think of, of it as a balance almost you know um you you if you have enough resilience then your scale won't tip as easy when you get criticism for your work or when you have to when you have a um, string of bad luck so to speak or something like that right you know sickness uh car repairs all of those things, they can derail us. Like, why is this happening? What is this happening for, right? But when you have more resilience, you'll have this core of power, solar plexus, you know, 
you'll have that core of power and you can remain standing in balance with your heart center and your solar plexus, like right, your center of power. And you become more resilient to face those adversities, right? Then also within that, you start building community. You start building authentic and genuine connections with others and by being true to yourself you're no longer becoming who the other person needs you are both in this symbiotic relationship that allows you to be who you are allows them to be who they are which then fosters deeper and deeper more meaningful relationships in that yes we'll lose some relationships but that's okay because we gain so much when we experience true self-acceptance and self-love, self-compassion, self-love. And within all of this, it creates a stepping stone, the foundation for personal growth. It actually fuels it. It creates like a very fertile ground for you to start experiencing more and more freedom. And once you accept your current state of being and know that you can either stay here in this little box or you can break that box wide open and start experiencing the world at your most truest essence, you know, bringing that to the table, you will find that you've embarked upon a journey of self-improvement that is less burdened by the inner critic, all of that self-criticism, all that negativity, right? And in the process, guess what? You start reducing stress. You're no longer having to strive for external validation you are fostering acceptance and love within yourself right and so when you're in this contented state of being you're trusting in the universe in the divine to you know provide and show you your illuminated path then you're more relaxed and you're able to validate yourself and you're no longer seeking external validation so therefore you reduce a lot of stress and in that then you start moving toward your ultimate goal which is happiness and fulfillment right and this you know when you accept yourself when you're no longer seeking external validations you start to free up mental space an emotional space to pursue your passions and show up authentically and find joy even in the simplest most mundane moments of life and that's what true happiness is is finding happiness and enjoyment in the present moment regardless of how um icky <laughs> Or grimy, it might be. And it doesn't always have to be that way. Personally, I like getting dirty. I like working hard. There's a sense of accomplishment and joy when I put myself, it put my hands to hard work. Um, but it is more fulfilling when that hard work is for myself, for my house my family including kit cats <laughs> did you find you a cozy space yeah and within your community right so hard work isn't what we're trying to avoid but we're trying to give ourselves resiliency and buoyancy to do the hard work that seems fulfilling and not for everybody else, if that makes sense. 
And remember that self-acceptance isn't about being complacent or resigning yourself to who and what you are. Um, it's about nurturing a healthy relationship with yourself. It's about acknowledging that you're a work in process, progress. You're that onion that you're peeling off each layer, right? And acknowledging that where you're at on your path and what you were doing, what you've done up till now, and what you're doing now, and what you'll continue doing in the future is perfectly okay. And that you'll you'll learn. And this is uh, the self-acceptance is that soil that we were talking about for personal growth so that an authentic life of fulfillment and contentment and happiness so it can flourish. So... I'm going to give you five ways to start practicing a little bit more self-acceptance. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are if you're watching the replay or if you popped in live. And just, you know, feel free to share your struggles, how you've, you know, what you've come up against in your path to self-compassion and self-acceptance. And what triumphs you've also had you can use it use comments you can send me a private message whatever feels aligned to you but here are the five steps that you can take um you don't have to do them all you don't have to do them all at one time they can be interchanged however you like but practice self-compassion treat yourself with the kindness and compassion that you would offer a dear friend. We already mentioned that, right? And this can start with just looking in the mirror in the morning and telling yourself that you love yourself. Um, again, like I said, these affirmations can be dangerous um, if we don't believe them. So if you can't believe that you are beautiful, it, that you are loved, that you are worthy at this moment, that's okay. Breathe into that. It is okay to not be able to tell yourself. Look yourself in the eyes in the mirror and tell yourself that I am loved. I am beautiful. I am strong. What you can do is start with I am statements that feel true to you in the moment. Not negative ones, but positive ones. And if that means I am a good parent, I am a good friend. I can bake a mean cornbread. <laughs> I don't know. I, I baked cornbread last night. So, you know, create I am statements that are positive that you can believe. Okay. Number two. And this goes along with what I was just talking about. Challenge negative self-talk. Like I said, it's so easy for the inner critic to pop in and reaffirm all that negative chatter, all the bad things that we believe about ourselves, right? So challenge those thoughts. It can be a journal page, you know, a day. Again, here I am sitting here with the artist way right next to me, you know, and she talks about making um, a list as those negative things come into your brain and using your journal pages, your daily pages to go through and start rewriting that narrative for yourself. Take those blurts, as she calls them, those negative blurts and start flipping them. Because with that, you start creating positive and affirming, empowering affirmations that you can use on a daily basis. <laughs> this third one, number three, this one's one of my hardest ones. And that's to set realistic expectations. Perfection 
is unattainable. So, set realistic expectations of yourself. Make achievable, small goals, and celebrate when you fulfill them. That's how you feel accomplished. And if you're similar to me, especially within that perfectionist mode, I have worked for years being superwoman. And especially when I hit my Saturn return in my 30th year, my whole entire body physically and mentally, everything got shook up. And this, you can hear this a lot within people's stories. Um, I, I was working with a gal this weekend um, that ha is going through very similar things. And it has manifested in a very toxic way in her body and is physically trying to get out. Um, I had very similar issues where all of my health problems, um, chronic pain started popping up. And the burnout, I was un I was no longer able to balance. I had filled my bucket up past the point of resiliency. There was no buoyancy left. There was no headroom in that canning jar. And it was just overflowing. So stop being superwoman as much as we want or superman or whoever you want to be and start trying to create those realistic expectations what is actually attainable then four mindfulness and self-reflection this can be meditation, it can be a journaling practice, it can be walks in the park or going hiking or paddle boarding or whatever feels mindful in your body. It's important to take time to actually take yourself on dates and to ask your inner child what it would enjoy that day. I, I tell people this over and over and over again. But also mindfulness can be in the most mundane moments. It can be in saying a little prayer or um, affirmation as you are lighting a candle. It can be, you know, stirring intention into your soup for dinner. It can be a lot of things it can be literally just setting the intention of observing nature around you even in an urban setting as you walk outside but taking at least five minutes a day for true mindfulness you know whether it's box breathing or journaling or something like that is going to be super important and finally number five is surround yourself with positivity. This is actually a task. We've talked about how our default state of the brain is a negative one. So we literally have to daily choose positivity. And sometimes that's tough. I get it. But having positive influences and supportive people on your side of the ring, you know, if you're in a boxing match, you have to have your cheerleaders. Um, and the biggest thing is you have to become your own cheerleader. But having a community of like-minded people that you can turn to when you need help or you need a boost of confidence is so, so very important. And that, you know, that's where those boundaries come in place. That's where, you know, we sometimes have to shake up our lives a little bit and see what sticks. And, you know, that can also be 
minimizing your accessibility or the accessibility of negativity to come to you those boundaries you know so social media is so so very bad about comparison culture so the simplest thing is you can limit your time on social media or curate who and what you see that is an awesome way of surrounding yourself with positivity um there's been so many times where people were like hey did you hear about this awful thing that happened and i'm like no i guess tell me more so i'm at least up on um current events but it it just proves that you can curate your life to be this enclave of positivity um it doesn't mean that the negativity won't come in but your resiliency your golden shield of uh, your bright amber essence of love and protection will be around you and you only allow in what you want to engage in and it, i'm not telling you to totally remove yourself from society i'm not telling you that at all i'm telling you that you know limiting how much exposure you have to some of these current events they're just fostering fear and separation and judgment for yourself for your neighbor for other countries for our leaders and stuff like that that is what we can minimize it's still important to stay up to date on what's going on around us but not being drugged into the muck of all of that because we need to stay in a higher vibration and sharing the love from our heart um <laughs> so i hope within that that you find some little nuggets of ways to step into cultivating self-acceptance and remember it's a journey it all comes with time and patience and remember we're all this little onion that we're pulling back each little layer at a time and we might experiment speed bumps and detours along the way and that's okay so i send you off with lots of love and compassion and belief that you are amazing and that you are loved and worthy of all that you desire and it, you can take that belief with you if you can't hold that for yourself and you can borrow that until you're able to hold it for yourself and pass it on to others in the same way so have a wonderful week. Love y'all. And I'll see you later.